Hello, today I'm going to be reviewing a book called The Opposite of Loneliness. This is an amazing book and I would really like to read you the cover of it. Marina Keegan's star was on the rise when she graduated magnum cum laude from Yale in May 2012. She had a play that was to be produced at the New York International Fringe Festival and a job waiting for her at the New Yorker. Tragically, five days after graduation, Marina died in a car crash. As her family, friends, and classmates, deep in grief, joined to create a memorial service for Marina, her unforgettable last essay for the Yale Daily News, The Opposite of Loneliness, went viral, receiving more than 1.4 million hits. She had struck a chord. Even though she was just 22 when she died, Marina left behind a rich, expansive trove of prose like her title essay captures the hope, uncertainty, and possibility of her generation. The Opposite of Loneliness is an assemblage of Marina's essays and stories that, like the last lecture, articulates the universal struggle that all of us face as we figure out what we aspire to be and how we can harness our talents to make an impact on the world. This book is and is also not for everybody. I say this because she seems like a very, very, very happy lady, but when you get into the story you can see that it's actually very sad what's going on in her head, but that is the vehicle she has chosen to send her message on to the readers. Her stories are sad, but they make you think so much so that by the time you get to the tail side of the book, you do have a different outlook on things. At least I did. It is very magical indeed, and the prose just simply complements the message that she is conveying. I'm scared because I am parting with this book tomorrow and I am gifting it to my stepmother. But I am very glad to give it to her. It is okay. It is something that I feel great about. It is a good book, but I am kind of scared. This is honestly the first book I've bought in two copies of ever, and I am actually giving them both away because I enjoyed it so much that I want to share it with other people. This chick, Marina, man, she just gets me. She knows she's in my head. I say this because I am currently a college student, I'm currently a sophomore, and she had just graduated from Yale. And I can totally say that she nailed the awkward weirdness of relationships in college and what they can be, and then the awkwardness of just everything in general. But the awkwardness was because of sadness. It was just so sad that they didn't even know what to do with themselves. It was insane. The partnering between love and death in this book leave it with a silent, soundless soundtrack. You hear nothing because every moment is so ambient and feely. You can just feel it, you're there. And she just does a great job at projecting the tone and making you feel like you're in the moment with her and her character. It's like in a movie if you realize you have a scene and you just don't want music. Like the music just clutters the scene and you just don't want it. But she nailed it perfectly and put it in a book because a book can't have music and it's not cluttered and it's awesome. I do have to say though that one or two of the fiction essays especially were rather similar. But one was good, that means the other is good. But they're just so similar in relation to the other viewpoints that she told other stories from that it just made them seem that they were very similar. But I don't think they actually were, but they were in relation to the other ones. Like I said, she experiments with a lot of viewpoints in this book. She mainly writes in first person, but there is a piece in there where she writes sending messages and uses that format and actually does it very well. And it's only a one-way conversation that you get, and it's just very very interesting to see and it's awesome to see it succeed and she nails it with the details and the research that she does on these kind of things that you just simply feel like you're there mixed in with the tone of the characters and the characterization of the characters is just amazing however I talked about this with a very very excited tone and yet the book doesn't have very many exciting or nappy moments but her book does contain her works in fiction and in nonfiction and if you think nonfiction is boring or sounds boring to you any strictly fiction readers, I swear to you that this stuff will make you reconsider everything. She just simply nails the fact that some of us are completely wasting our times at these four-year colleges and what are we doing with our lives and why are we not following our passions and what would we do if we only had until tomorrow. The nonfiction stories average on about eight to ten pages in length and all the other stories are very very short as well so it feels like you're doing a lot of work and the page breaks are very short too so Everything is so precise and every word is chosen in order to make every second of this read purposeful and meaningful. And it's sad because she didn't even get to finish these words to the best that she wanted to get to finish them. And her friends didn't even finish them when they were trying to publish this book. All she got was the time that she had 
and look at what she made. So, in conclusion, I will say this. I'm scared to give it to my stepmom because, yes, it does reference alcohol, sex, drugs, weed, cocaine, and other college kid problems, and therefore I fear that it may not be relatable to that audience. However, a big, big, big however here, I personally believe that anybody that goes into this book with an open mind will be able to take something away from it. I warn you to be ready to feel sad by the end of this book, but you can take this and turn it into something that will make every single one of your days a little bit more rich. Can you imagine that this book, this thin book, is the work, the life work of this young author? That's all she had the time to write. She had just gotten a job at the New Yorker. She had an entire career in front of her and at her commencement speech she harped on the fact that quote we are so young and no matter how old you are she has lived a truly short life and this could happen to absolutely any of us and that is why this book is relevant and that is why you should also go out and get this wonderful book here I highly recommend it. Just make sure that you take something away and realize that she's not trying to make you sad, she's just trying to make you feel something. High five. Good job to her. Remember that we are so young. Until next time, have great days. Goodbye. But I am trying to make the most of my time here on this little earth, which means I am trying to write a book. And if you want to follow along with me and go and watch my progression, I'm up to day 13 at this point. I am on a roll, and I highly encourage you to come with me and start your own goals and reach your life dreams with me. So if you like this, then you might like that series and you might want to go try it out. It's up to you, but it's going to be right here, so if you want to watch it, there it is. Have fun, I hope you enjoy, and I hope you get inspired. That's what it's all about, get inspired. Be around whatever inspires you every single day. That's what it's all about. Feel it and just revel in it, yeah? And all that other cheesy stuff, yeah. If you feel cheesy about it, then you're probably doing it right.